Luke chapter 12, verse 22 to 31. Bible says, Then Jesus said to his disciples, About your life, what you will eat, or about what? Or about your body. What you wear. For life is more than food. And the body more than clothes. Says, consider the ravens, they do not sow or reap. They have no store room or barn. Yet, God feeds them. How much more? Father, who you are than the birds. Who of you by worrying and can add a single hour to your life? Since you cannot do this very little thing, then do not worry yourself about the rest. Consider how the world flowers flowers grow, they do not labor or spend. Yet, I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass on the floor, which is here today and tomorrow it is thrown into the fire how much more will he clothe you you of little faith so do not set your heart on what you will eat or drink do not worry about it. For the pagans of the world run after such things. The Bible says those in the world, if I'm paraphrasing, they all chase after those things. Tell your father knows what you need. I like the best one. Well. It says, but seek his kingdom and all these things will be given as well unto you. And all these things will be given unto you. You go with me to the book of Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 and 7. Philippians verse 6. Bible says, do not be anxious about anything. And in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request unto the Lord. Bible says, and the peace of God that transcends all understanding will guide your heart. Guide your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Tell to somebody and say, do not be worried. Or tell us that I could hear someone. I can you say I could hear someone. Some of you, when you come to church and we are making prophetic declarations, you think we are joking. Tell yourself that I could hear someone. I will never be worried in life. Hallelujah. Uh, Overcoming worries of life. Overcoming worries in life. Why you shouldn't be worried or you shouldn't be anxious in life. Some of you, you have been thinking about so many things in life. Everyone has 
one way or the other has something to be worried about. Everyone in one way or the other we have something to be worried about. You see, some worries come even in your marriages. Some can even come in your finances. Some has to do with your career. Some has to do with your ministries. Some has to do with your professions. Some has to do with your schooling. Maybe there is a particular sickness that has been troubling you in life. There is a stubborn child of yours that you think that God should touch him or her. We all have something to deal with in life. But the Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 11 verse 28. It says, come to me all ye who are heavy laden and who carry yoke. Come to me and I will give you rest. No matter the situation you go to, come to me. And as you come to the Lord, God will give you the rest. I see somebody here today. After prayer and after the preaching of the word, God is going to give you rest. I said, God is going to give you rest. I said, God is going to give you rest. Whatever has been worrying you in life, Whatever has been troubling you in life, God is about to give you rest. Lift your hands and say, Father. Oh, I can say, Father. Whatever has been troubling my life for so many years, today I lay them before you. I lay them on the altar. Oh, come on, say, say, I lay them on the altar of Calvary. Father, take care of my worries. Take care of my worries. In the name of Jesus. I don't know that which is worrying you. I don't know that which is troubling you. I don't know that which you are thinking about. But one thing I know for sure. That the very God who sent me here today. Is going to take care of every burden. Is going to take care of every burden. In the mighty name of Jesus. The louder you are army, the faster you are blessed. In the name of Jesus. I said, God will take care of your worries. God will take care of your worries. God will take care of your bellies. God will take care of your troubles. God will take care of your afflictions. And look upon your life. The Lord will take them away from your life. In the name of Jesus. Turn to somebody and say, do not be worried. Oh, say, I will never be worried again. Hallelujah. Amen. So, worry does not empty tomorrow of its sorrow. Now, how was it? Let me say it again. Worry does not empty tomorrow of its sorrow. It empties today of the strength that we have. The reason why the devil always wants you to become weary in life is to take away the strength which you have. You see, anytime the devil burdens you with worries, you have no strength to move on in life. But I pray for somebody today. I said, I pray for somebody today. strength was so my strength is I pray that your strength will never go down I said I pray that your strength will never go down your faith in the Lord will never go down in the mighty name of Jesus if you shout amen you shall be a portion somebody shout amen like a believer so remember if problem is flexible 
If the situation is flexible, if a situation is such that you can do something about it, then that is not a problem at all. Did you hear it? If you can do something about the problem or the situation, then it is not a problem at all. For you to be able to overcome all the problems and all the challenges, you must maintain your strength. I said you must maintain your strength. And now, I see five people in the house. This year, you will come to a place of victory.
saying, without the help of the Lord. If you are too anxious and too worried about life, all that you are trying to tell God is that Lord, I can solve my own situation. Therefore, if you cannot do anything about your situation, then you will hand it over to the Lord. I said you will hand it over to the Lord. As I cannot do anything about my situation. So today I hand it over to the Lord. As I hand it over to the Lord. I give it back unto the Lord. Because he is the one who can see the end from the beginning. The Bible says in the book of Jeremiah. Chapter 29 verse 11.
always solves the problem. Do you know what I'm talking about? I don't see my worriness as my challenges. I don't see my worriness as the negative. I don't see it as an unfortunate situation. Because in every unfortunate situation, there is a negativity. But I see it as coincidentally. The word coincidentally means it means that there is a divine purpose at the back of it. It means that all that I am passing through today, all that I am going through today, there is a divine purpose at the end of it. You are not just what I'm saying. Let me close the word. I said there is a divine purpose of what I'm going through. So I don't see my negative negatively. I see them positively. Because God must bring it. Come on, put it there. Let me start to worry yourself. You know that maybe you are talking the other thing. So you must see your challenges as something that God is going to manifest himself. Something that God is going to manifest himself through. I see somebody here. Maybe you were being disappointed. Maybe I was in Asia or Maybe you you went to a lot. Maybe I to be That girl just left you. Maybe your situation is also like me. Your wife just parted and left you. But there is a purpose. Your future shall become better than your yesterday. <laughs>
guy just took you and he just misunderstood you. He just disappointed you. I thought he's coming. You will also be in your V8. By the roadside. And you tell that you tell that look at that man there. He came to the boat with me and he disappointed. This a thin stream of fear trickling through the mind. But if encouraged, it is cut a channel into which all the blessing that you need will come into your life. Amen. It is a channel. Oh yes, a whole It is a channel. It is a channel. Uh, that through that a blessing is going to flow into your life. It means that your worriness is going to open a door for you. Don't fear you are more serious. Let me tell you.
for you. No, let me give you two reasons or two ways you can overcome weariness. One is by trusting in the Lord. The word of God says, even the bears, they do not sow. The, 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 the flowers, they do not even sow. They, they don't do anything. They don't work. They don't do anything about their lives. Yet, the Father feeds them.
provide them. He is going to provide all of this. The other day, uh, out of But he's also not my enemy. 
But I like you. Now, so for me, I am not time for so now so a penasem. I talk about a buffalo. A buffalo. Now, remember a buffalo. The guy is rich. When you always I don't know the source of his money. When you listen, kind of fire And I don't know how he's also seeking his God. Uh huh. Maybe someone should share the message with him. I don't know. I can't talk about it. Mm -hmm. The other time I went to Facebook and somebody. Uh, he, he said in his jet and car, and his car just arrived, and a lot of people were seeing a lot of things. Mm -hmm. I said, Please leave this man. What kind of car? I'm commenting, and they were giving him some, some, some mess. I was like, I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the Tomorrow, if you have some way, if I become rich. And you, know, and you speak against me. Say, you know how God will punish you. You know how God is going to punish you. The way I am suffering for God today. And tomorrow things are working for me. I don't know how God will punish you. Maybe you have suffered for God or He's suffering for God. Maybe you have suffered for God. Maybe you have suffered for God or He's suffering for God. Maybe you have suffered for God. Maybe you have suffered for God. He's still seeking God. So I can't talk about Him. Of God first and its righteousness, the other things God will give you. So if you say, I'm sorry, I'm not going to say, 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 I'm not going to say,